Hello, my name is Kant Slobodchikov. I would like to tell you about the conservation of prairie dogs. There are five species of prairie dogs, all found only in North America. All of the prairie dogs are very social animals, living in colonies called towns. They have a social system similar to our own, and just like us, they have a complicated language. All five species are decreasing at an alarming rate. Since 1900, more than 98% of prairie dog habitat has been lost, so that today we have anywhere between 1 and 2% of prairie dog habitat left on our grasslands. Prairie dogs are keystone species on the American grasslands. A keystone species is one that influences the distribution and welfare of a lot of other species. More than 200 other species of vertebrates and many species of invertebrates depend either directly or indirectly upon the activities of prairie dogs for their livelihood. Some species, such as the black-footed ferret, are found only on prairie dog colonies. Other species, such as the mountain plover, burrowing owl, swift fox, and ferruginous hawk live almost exclusively in prairie dog colonies or heavily utilize prairie dogs as food. Although the range maps of the five species show a broad distribution for each species, the range maps don't tell the whole story. In reality, within the historical distribution of each species of prairie dog, they've been reduced to isolated pockets that are rapidly disappearing. For example, one study looked at how many prairie dog colonies that were known to exist in Arizona in 1987 still existed in 2001 and found that 70% of the colonies had disappeared just in that brief interval of time. The four major causes for the decline of prairie dogs are poisoning, shooting, development, and disease. Historically, prairie dogs have been considered to be pests, eating grass that people thought was intended for cattle, or eating agricultural crops. Although there have been very few studies of competition between cattle and prairie dogs, and the existing studies have been mostly inconclusive, this has not stopped federal, state, and county governments from poisoning large numbers of prairie dogs on farms, ranches, and public lands. Prior to the 1960s, millions of prairie dogs were killed. Today, they're still being poisoned in many places. These poisons cause tremendous pain and suffering through internal bleeding that can last up to 72 hours, and the poisons have to be reapplied on a regular basis, putting dangerous chemicals into our environment. Another source of decline is shooting. Prairie dogs are often shot as a form of recreational target shooting. This killing disrupts the social groups of prairie dogs and not only reduces their numbers, but also makes them more susceptible to disease. Because prairie dogs only reproduce once a year, and each female has in a year only four to five pups, of which half do not survive their first year, shooting can exterminate a colony very quickly. A third source of decline is development. Prairie dogs have their colonies in flat places that are often ideal for building subdivisions, shopping centers, or parking lots. As urban areas expand, they often engulf prairie dog colonies. Sometimes, colony fragments are entirely surrounded by urban development, and the colonies persist for a while until they too are destroyed. Also, prairie dog colonies are often found in places where there is gas and oil development that disrupts the colonies. A fourth source of decline is disease, specifically bubonic plague or sylvatic plague in animals. Plague was introduced into the United States in 1900 in San Francisco from Asia and quickly spread through wildlife populations. Although many different species of wildlife can become infected with plague, prairie dogs are incredibly susceptible to this disease that is brought into their colonies by fleas from other animals. When plague enters a colony, 90 to 100 percent of the prairie dogs in the colony die from the disease within two weeks. People typically worry about getting plague from prairie dogs, but the reality is that extremely few people come down with plague. Many more people die from bee stings than come down with plague. Also, 
plague is easily treated with antibiotics if it is caught early on. Although prairie dog populations are declining very rapidly, there are few legal protections for these animals. Only two species are listed. The Utah prairie dog is listed as threatened under the Endangered Species Act, also known as the ESA, and the Mexican prairie dog is listed as endangered under the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, also known as CITES. Environmental groups and individuals regularly submit petitions to the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service for listing the other three species, and just as regularly, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service denies these petitions. Even the two species that are listed and are supposed to be protected often are not. Their protection is often not enforced. On the state and county levels, there are very few legal protections. In fact, some counties mandate the poisoning of prairie dogs on private landowners' property. A few states prohibit the shooting of prairie dogs during the time that the pups are being born, but otherwise, prairie dogs can be shot without any limits. We can ask, why is it that there are so few protections for prairie dogs? One answer is cultural prejudice. In the expansion of the Old West, settlers viewed prairie dogs as vermin, not realizing that prairie dogs had a wonderful social system and a highly complex language. In those days, people had very little regard for wildlife. Today, most Americans agree that preserving wildlife and our heritage is very important. Another answer is the perception of plenty. Even today, people say that there are lots of prairie dogs and they will never go extinct, so we can poison them and shoot them as much as we want. That is exactly the same kind of wrong thinking that led to the extinction of the passenger pigeon. People shot the pigeons in large numbers and kept thinking there are lots more of them until the last pigeon died in a zoo and there were no more passenger pigeons. That's the same path that prairie dogs are on today. So how can we keep prairie dogs from going extinct? Organizations such as the Prairie Dog Coalition are working on developing educational and conservation strategies to inform the public about the plight of the prairie dogs. Environmental groups such as Wild Earth Guardians are making huge efforts to influence legislation that would protect prairie dogs and are filing lawsuits with the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service to try to get more protection for the animals. Other groups like the Southern Plains Land Trust are acquiring private land where they preserve not only prairie dogs but also grassland ecosystems. This is an effective process but it requires a lot of money to acquire the land. Still others relocate prairie dog colonies from places where they would be destroyed to new places where they can live in peace. However, this is a very time-consuming process, requiring funding, an experienced relocator, and many volunteers donating lots of time to move the prairie dogs. Also, there is the problem of where to move them to. Many private landowners, as well as a lot of local, state, and federal public lands, do not want to allow prairie dogs onto their land, even though the public lands belong to all of us and it is difficult to find land to which the prairie dogs can be relocated. So we are left with the question, can people coexist with prairie dogs? The answer is definitely yes. Prairie dogs are wonderful animals to watch and their colonies attract lots of different species of wildlife. We can and have set up watchable wildlife viewing sites around prairie dog colonies that let people enjoy watching not only the prairie dogs, but all the other species that live with these animals, as well as the beautiful plants and flowers that live there. We need a lot more of these watchable wildlife viewing sites. These can be a great source of ecotourism and can bring money into communities from tourists who come to watch the prairie dogs. More and more people are starting to respect wildlife and their natural heritage. And respecting prairie dogs is a great way to respect our natural heritage. If people realize that prairie dogs can be a great economic engine for their communities, they would enact legislation that would protect prairie dogs and keep them from going extinct. If you would like to learn more about the conservation of prairie dogs, you can find out a lot more in the book, Prairie Dogs, Communication and Community in an Animal Society. You can find a link to this book on my website, 
www.konslobotchikov.com.